So today we're going to do um, a self-care meditation, a meta bhavana, as it's called in uh, the old English language, the, not the old English, the old Indian, get my brain into working order. Um, yes, the, the old Indian language, uh, meta bhavana, meta means something like friendship and kindness and love and uh, Bhavana means to cultivate, to uh, to to work towards, to to produce. And today, normally we do it for um, a number of people, ourselves and others. But today on the Wednesday, we've uh, we part of our routine in the morning is to just wish ourselves well on the Wednesday morning because we really need that. Um, we go through life and life is hard isn't it and sometimes it's not easy to be who we are um and we just want to be happy that's the thing that's all we want we just want to be happy and we spend a lot of time in our lives with projects uh, and strategies to make ourselves happy uh, but somehow they don't work and uh Partly because we're um, we're just we're just looking for the things that make us happy instead of actually just finding out where real happiness lies. And uh, in Buddhism, the Buddha said that uh, real happiness lies in just letting go of wanting uh, uh, wanting things and of trying to avoid things. So we go chasing after things that we think will make us happy. We try and avoid things that will make us unhappy. And that's our kind of strategy. And it seems quite sensible, but it's, it's less than effective. And the way to be happy is really to accept things as they are, uh, just to be with whatever happens, because we can't change the way the world is going to act towards us. Uh, we can change it a little bit, but we can't alter reality to any great degree. You know, we're going to have a sunny day like today, and then we'll have uh, a really uh, unpleasant day tomorrow, maybe, or another day. And uh, we can't control the world around us to any great degree. But if we can accept it, then it becomes a lot easier. We don't keep causing ourselves pain and suffering and this applies uh, in a major way to ourselves we none of us are perfect we're just not we're human beings and we're going to make mistakes we're going to embarrass ourselves we're going to uh, trip up and be humiliated and be upset and be sad and we're going to lose things and so we're going to go through all these different uh, painful experiences in our lives. So if we can embrace them in a way, rather than trying to avoid them, rather than trying to ignore them, if we can actually turn towards our what we might think of as our failings or our inadequacies or our sense of not being good enough, if we can turn towards that with a deep sense of love and kindness, then it really changes things. If we can learn to be our own best friend uh, and support ourselves, then that is part of the path to happiness. In fact, it's a prerequisite to happiness. Uh, as long as we are dissatisfied with ourselves in some way, uh, it's impossible for us to be happy, truly happy. So our job, our work in progress, is to keep noticing when we feel um, upset or feel bad about ourselves or, or whatever, inadequate, not quite up to it, wishing that we were better. Then the practice is to turn towards our poor sense of self, and give it love, give it friendship and support. And to learn to actually see all the different bits of ourselves, 
the ones we consider good, the ones we consider bad, and to treat them all with care and attention. And if we can do that, they will change, we will change. Uh, but self-care and self-love, it's not selfishness, it's really important to us in our lives. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to practice caring for ourselves. We're going to practice having a sense of love towards our being that is just sometimes struggling through life uh, and that does, does its best. We do our best, don't we? So I'll stop talking now and we'll get on with it. Um, just good morning to Rachel and Sarah that have joined us since and to everybody else who's joined us. It's good to see you here. Um, so this meditation is in five stages. And the first stage, we're just going to uh, just take a look at ourselves really and all our different bits and just try and bring them all together with a sense of love. In the second stage, um, we're going to try and see ourselves as our own best friend who looks after who looks after us so we look after ourselves uh, in the third stage we're going to uh, acknowledge the vulnerable side of ourselves our inner child and in the fourth stage um, we're going to look at our um, inner critic the critic that sits on our shoulders and tells us tells us off all the time um, and then in the final stage we'll just bring the whole of ourselves together again um, so this is quite a powerful meditation um, so just relax and um, if you find it's uh, it's a little bit uh, I don't know what shall I say if you find you feel tender during the course of it or um, Sometimes we can cry in meditation. Um, and that's okay. It's okay to feel tender. It's okay to feel uh, tearful. Um, just be kind to that. And if you can't, if you can't, if you find it difficult, um, if you don't seem to be getting anywhere, just be kind to that as well. It doesn't matter. We're just doing our best with this. So, okay. So off we go. So we begin in the usual way by just settling into the meditation, just noticing how you are mentally, emotionally, and physically. And in a way, it doesn't really matter whether you're feeling great or whether you're not feeling so great. What matters is that you just feel the way you feel and just accept that as okay, because that's the truth. That's where we begin from. And just noticing the contact with the chair or if you're lying on the bed, the contact with the bed or the floor or the mat or the cushion. Just this contact with the earth, grounding you, supporting you. I'm bringing attention to the shoulder area and the breath and as you breathe the rising of the shoulders on the in breath and the dropping of the shoulders on the out breath and just relaxing on each out breath just allowing the body to relax as you breathe out 
as the shoulders drop, letting any tightness or tension drop away down through the body. And again on the next out breath, and then again on the next. And as much as you can, relaxing your mind, relaxing your body. Just allowing yourself to be as you are. There's no demands upon you. And bringing the attention to the chest area, the rising and falling of the chest. The sensations of the breath in the chest. Moving down to the bottom of the rib cage, right in the middle of the front of the body. This is a place called the sternum and just behind there is our heart center, chitta, our heart mind, the place of all positive emotion. So as you breathe in and breathe out, just be open to noticing a warm, pleasant feeling in this heart center. This is where we feel love. And if you can't feel anything, that's okay. Just try bringing to mind someone that you really love, a person or a pet, and see what happens. So if you have a warm feeling there, that's good. If you don't, that's all also fine. Just staying open to noticing warmth and kindness in this area. If you can't feel it, it doesn't mean you don't have it. <laughs> so just considering ourselves now. As human beings, we're like a precious jewel. We have a precious life. It's so, so valuable, just like a precious jewel. And just like a precious jewel, we are many faceted. Um, and except our jewel is not quite finished. It's a work in progress. Some of the facets are beautifully polished and shiny and others are dull and in need of further attention. Some are beautiful, some not so beautiful. Just like all the different things that make up our being. There's all the bits that we feel comfortable with. And there's all the bits that we feel not so comfortable with. There's the strong bits and the not so strong bits. The vulnerable bits, the happy bits, the sad bits. the regretful bits and the grieving bits.
and the critical bits and the conceited bits. <laughs> There's so many different parts of us, aren't there? All rattling around inside us. Old habits that are not so helpful. New habits that are helpful. So this is a multifaceted being that you are. And it's okay to be like that. Can we get to know ourselves and get to love all these parts of ourselves? Even the ones that are less than what we would wish for. They are part of us. And it's only by bringing them love and kindness that we will change them. So in this first part of this practice, can we wish ourselves well, the whole of ourselves, every part of ourselves, can we wish a sense of goodwill and kindness and patience to all these multi facets of ourselves. And in stage two, <clears throat> can we acknowledge that sometimes we're not very kind to ourselves, that we can be dissatisfied with how we are or what we do. We can be critical. And can we try instead to be our own best friend? Can we see that inside ourselves there is a good friend just waiting to support us in our lives, to stand by us in difficult times, to help us through without criticism, just with support and love and kindness to ourselves. Can we be our own best friend? Whatever happens, You might think of a good friend that you have and how they would respond to you in times of difficulty. They would help you, wouldn't they? They'd come and support you. So can you be like this best friend to yourself?
<clears throat> in the third stage we're just going to acknowledge the vulnerable side of ourselves maybe with something we turn away from maybe with something that we don't give much regard to maybe just wish it wasn't like that but our vulnerable side is like a small child our own inner child that gets frightened and scared and feels difficulties and may not feel good enough so if this was a a real child on the outside that came running to us upset and scared what would we do we would put our arms around this small child and we would give it kindness and love and support we would try to make it feel okay we would give it total acceptance wouldn't we so in the same way can we care for our own small inner child when he or she gets scared or feels inadequate or frightened worried anxious can we take our own inner child in our arms in our imagination and hold them close give them love and support can we help our inner child feel okay and accepted no matter what So still with our arm around the inner child, bringing to mind this part of ourselves that constantly criticizes what we do. This inner critic that constantly, or from time to time at any rate, tells us that we could have done better that we were rubbish 
that uh, we didn't do what we should have done. And we might have a troubled relationship with our inner critic. We might not feel very kindly towards our inner critic. After all, it is always criticizing us. But maybe you can just reflect that the inner critic means well. Our inner critic is just trying to protect us in the world, just trying to get us to be safe in the world. However, it's completely deluded, <laughs> this inner critic. Uh, it means well, but it's going about things the wrong way. So maybe we could have a sense of kindness to this inner critic. It, just like the small child, in a way, is feeling scared for us. It's feeling anxious. It wants us to be okay. So perhaps we can just see our inner critic with kindness. And when it gets critical, just reassure it that everything's okay. We are as we are. We're just work in progress, doing our best, little by little. Mistakes happen and good things happen. Sometimes we do really well and sometimes we don't do so well. But we're just continuing to tread the path of life like everyone else. So if we can look after our inner critic as well, help it feel okay, then the inner critic too will begin to soften. In the final stage, <clears throat> we're just going to bring the whole of ourselves together again. The good bits, what we consider the bad bits, the things we like about ourselves and the things we don't. Can we have a sense of loving kindness towards the whole of ourselves? Perfectly imperfect human beings. Tender, normal human beings. 
just doing our best in life. Can we be our own best friend, supporting ourselves in difficult times, enjoying the good times with ourselves, just like any friend would. Can we take care of the fearful, anxious inner child that just wants to be safe? Can we metaphorically hold him or her in our arms and reassure them? And we have a deep sense of kindness to our inner critic. We don't have to take the advice, but we can understand where it's coming from. A place of fear and unease. So can we have a sense of loving kindness to our critical voice and reassure it. Can we accept ourselves just as we are with our many facets Just doing our best, a work in progress, making our way through life. Can we love ourselves completely for what we are, who we are, and where we are. I'm going to ring the bell in a moment to bring the meditation to an end. And when I do, as always, just taking your time to open your eyes and gently move your body. Trying to retain some of what you may have felt and learnt about yourself today. Trying to take a sense of loving kindness for your own being out into the rest of the day. <laughs> 